Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we'll be going over vectors, functions, and space curves. This will be a very short video. It is probably one of the shortest videos in my uh, playlist. And the reason for that is and the reason for it is because we'll be basically just describing what a vector function is and what space curves are. And we won't be doing too much of it because there isn't really anything meaningful to discuss about this too much. But if you if you want, I can make a more extensive video about vector functions and space curves. Just let me know in the comments. But nevertheless, let's go get started with this video. So a vector function is a function that's of multiple kind of variables or equations that represent one particular type of curve. So here's the formal definition. So a vector function is a function whose domain is in r so it's a, it's all it's all real numbers and the range is given by a set of vectors okay so how do we actually you know quantify this or describe this so quite literally it's just if i give you a function a vector function r of t hence the arrow so the points on this function are described by the vector functions f of t g of t and h of t so there's nothing really special about this it's just the description of a particular surface in terms of coordinates there's many there's many types of this thing for example we can have a, something called a helix which is kind of like a a spring of sorts we can have an ellipse that, that describe that's described at a surface and we can have many different situations but this is something we'll be doing in the next video because here i just wanted to kind of introduce the idea of what a space curve is and here of course i'm assuming that we're working in three dimensions so working in r3 you can have multiple dimensions you can have four functions of two variables one variable four five a hundred variables it doesn't oh, functions rather it doesn't really matter per se but the important thing to realize is that we're just kind of working with three dimensions so there's nothing special about this one of the most fundamental things we need to talk about is the idea of a domain and the best it's best to kind of do this with an example so there's nothing really special to talk about here so let's talk about how to describe the domain of a of a space curve. So find the domain of the following space curve or vector function. So it's going to be R of t is equal to the natural log of t minus 1 plus e to the t times j plus root t times k. Okay, now, of course, in kind of like bracketing notation, we can write this as ln of t minus 1, e to the power of t, and root t. Okay, well, the domain would just mean that all of these things have to be defined. So, for example, for the first one, we need t minus 1 to be bigger than 0. The second one is always defined, so we don't really care about that. And the last one, we have t must be bigger than or equal to 0, meaning that t is bigger than 1, or t is bigger than or equal to 0. But this is the more kind of restrictive set. So that means, by definition, our domain is just going to be 1, not including 1, to infinity. And that right there is our domain. So there's nothing particularly special about this. Also, as a quick note, a space curve is just this collection of all points that make up a particular curve. A vector function is the description of this, well, function per se, but a space curve is just a collection of all points that actually make up the surface. So that's kind of the difference between the two things, but otherwise there's nothing particularly special about this. Anyways, so that's the domain of the function. And we'll, we'll do one more for the sake of 
for the sake of doing one more. So it's going to be the same thing. We're going to find a domain of something, but the equation is going to be a little bit different. I'm only even doing this just because I want to use a different point of notation. So in this case, R of t is going to be given by the following. So it's going to be cosine of t ln of 4 minus t and square root of t plus 1. Okay, so once again, the first one is always defined. It's never, cosine is never undefined anywhere. The second one, we have 4 minus t is bigger than 0. <coughs> and the last one, we need t plus 1 to be bigger than or equal to 0. But then this implies that 4 is bigger than t, and t is bigger than, that's, there should be a plus 1 there. And then the second one implies that t must be bigger than or equal to minus 1. Okay, but then this implies that the domain is going to be from minus 1 to 4. And that right there is going to be our domain here. So once again, nothing too special. And that's actually it for this that's actually it for this video. There really isn't much to talk about in this video in terms of what a vector function in space curves are. A vector function is just a function of uh, one or more variables of vector functions that describe a particular curve. And a space curve is just a collection of all the points that are in that curve. So if I have a random curve, for example, the space curve would just be the collection of all the points that make up that particular curve. So there isn't really any point of doing a, an example of that because that's kind of obvious as to what's going on there. But that's basically it for this video. There really isn't too much to talk about here. There's a bit more stuff you can talk about in terms of parameterizing space curves, but that's going to be a topic for another video. So that's it. If you have any questions about any of the concepts or the two examples I did, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, I'll see you around in the next video. Thank you all so much. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.